Oh, okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Restroom Off The Cuff. Today we have a cool review for you from the brand Traska. A little bit about them, they are headquartered out of Jacksonville Beach, Florida, and they were founded by a young guy named John Mack. Now, um, and of course his intentions were making a watch that you could wear without worrying about a true tool watch uh, to fit any activity and also fit it in style, uh, might I add. Now, the backstory here is he studied international business and Chinese and spent a semester abroad in China where he learned that many of the lower tier Swiss brands actually produce their watches in China, um, which pretty much spurred him to visit several factories to see if this was really the case. Surely enough, he saw uh, the big names on the assembly line as well, and not just the lower end stuff. Uh, so that pretty much prompted John to turn his love of watches, uh, Chinese, as well as the international business um, he'd been studying into a, you know, his first real entrepreneurial endeavor, Traska Watches. Now, once he graduated university back in 2016, um, he just pretty much started working on site uh, with all those factories in China um, to develop the first prototypes of the original um you know, original first gen Freediver and beyond. So he's had quite a few releases since then as well as updated iterations, um, which have, I think really, he's been able to build a brand uh, for himself um, out of a very um, clear cut kind of goal. So I applaud him for that. And I'm happy to uh, be featuring this latest iteration of that original watch that started it all, uh, the Freediver. So this is the Freediver, I guess you could call it the Gen 3. Um, and this is the mint green with ceramic bezel option. Now it's pretty much a newly revised model, um, now more refined uh, overall, with the highlights including, uh, of course, a nice higher beat for Hertz Miyota movement, uh, replacing the original Seiko movement that was in there, um, as well as some new case contours uh, that kind of carry out through uh, kind of the family design language for other Traska models and updates, um, and also getting a fully articulated bracelet. Now this particular watch isn't quite released yet. It will actually be released May 9th, depending on when you watch this in 2021. Uh, it's 600 as configured here with the ceramic bezel insert, or you can get it for 575 with the stainless steel bezel insert. So this will be releasing very, very soon. Um, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So with that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. Okay guys, now before we pick up the new model, let's see how far we've come. Check this out. I actually have a gen one, but you know what? Even before that, check this out. The case that these things come in, I mean, I have to tell you, look at the difference, in, look at the edge, look at the difference in refinement that they've already had within these iterations. It is outstanding. I mean, look at this now soft touch interior, button closure, ext I mean, extremely soft and supple. This thing feels like something you would actually buy aftermarket just for itself. Um, it is, this is beautifully done. Very, very nice. Um, but here, the original one was a cool, uh, you know, check that out. <laughs> um, well, it was, was nice, you know, nicely signed and everything. But here, now you get it, just the symbol, uh, the logo there. But here we go with this original guy here. Let's go ahead and take the packaging off deck. And take a look. Here's the original. And one thing, uh, you know, although the, uh, of course, the themes are still quite similar and the color palette, uh, you can see that it is actually quite a different looking watch um, for some of those finer details. Nice to see that they're both no date um, watches. Uh, and the color scheme is also very handsome, but you can see just a little bit bulkier before as well as look at the case on here. It, I, that was a nice signature piece was having that little step out of the round that met with the flat and then you get the bezel, the bevel there here, you're getting a bevel, but now it's just been refined to a smooth radius there. 
so really nice soft curvature um, that does suit also this nice box dome sapphire crystal so you're getting some of those bends here flat sapphire also a sapphire bezel insert versus ceramic um, so that's a big change and then look at the bracelet you can see the way that it tapers as well a lot more dramatic on the taper which adds refinement and then much different when it comes to the clasp um, as well but you are still getting a lot of micro adjust holes there um, but now it's not the double locking just the single lock um, and yeah I mean it's it's it still carries over all the things that you liked but it refined so well over just a few years um, and just a few different batches and releases you can see even the tone of the steel is, is a little bit different I think they even refined the application of that hard coating there uh, versus here it gave it a much more noticeable kind of darker tint um, here you're getting something that is uh, I think uh, a lot more uh, similar to just kind of regular uncoated steel in terms of the visual appearance. So I really dig that. So now that this old piece here is kind of out of the way, we can get into this, you know, the, the Freediver 3. So 600 bucks as configured. It has a 40 and a half millimeter diameter with only a 10.5 millimeter thickness, uh, but it's 12 millimeters if you do include that beautiful box domed crystal, um, which won't affect how thick the watch wears. It just does affect the overall actual uh, dimensions there. Um, but even with the crystal, only 12 millimeters, which is great, especially for a 200 meter water resistant dive watch. You have 48 millimeters lug to lug. The female end links do help uh, with that. Ooh, and you can see a little bit of that articulation there instead of it being, you know, a couple of three links smushed together and bonded and fixed. Uh, each link itself is fully articulating, as you can see, which is great. Um, Without getting too <laughs> sidetracked, you do have drilled lugs, which is great, which will make this absolutely a pleasure to swap out for straps. Also with that 20 millimeter lug width, it helps. Uh, and then we have a 120 click unidirectional rotating bezel with ceramic insert. Let's hear that. Ooh. I like the blend of smooth and notchy. Digging that. Touch of back play, but very nice overall. Let's go ahead and give it just a quick wipe now that I probably got my grubby little fingerprints all over that bezel insert. Really nicely done in terms of just the way this thing captures the light and holds it at different angles and different aspects. Very, very cool. I love that black um, bezel paired with the mint. I feel like it's a bit iconic for Traska at this point. Um, the movement inside, although you can't see it, is a Miyota 9039, which is the no date movement. Um, and yeah, and if you did choose the date model, which they actually have a cool date window at the six o'clock, um, it's circular and has a cool little bevel to it. Um, then you'd have the 9015, uh, which is also very popular, but the nice thing is it's a very slim movement and it's, uh, it has a nice smooth sweep to it. Look at that four Hertz beat count, uh, which is going to be eight ticks per second versus here on the original bit of a choppier uh, sweep there because it's only three hertz which is six ticks per second so to the naked eye maybe not so noticeable but um you know to a watch collector or connoisseur um it is something that at the very least you get a nice placebo telling you um that you have a smoother sweeping seconds hand if your uh, naked eye doesn't catch it anyway so that dial is this really cool semi-matte 
uh, mint green dial with applied indices and diamond cut hands and has BGW9 loom is 200 meters water resistant um, and then it has this great 20 millimeter lug width as you can see uh, and then this bracelet tapers down just beautifully uh, to 16 millimeters fully articulated everything solid so solid links solid end links um, and then you do get the full articulation on the three link setup here uh, which is great so if you wanted to get crazy with it and do some stacking I suppose you could uh, as you can see there uh, proof but uh, the main point of having that articulation means that the drape will not be limited by lack of articulation so this will actually wrap around versus it being a fixed um, in kind of a y shape there where um, it's it was you know only wrapping uh, to a certain extent and then of course it makes it easier when you're putting the watch on because now you're getting more articulation when you're stretching the watch out as you can see because before those would be fixed so you do get a little bit more room um, when you're putting the watch on the wrist which I think is great also you're still retaining that nice kind of signature perlage on the folding mechanism and you're getting nice bevels as well really handsome from that standpoint um, yeah this thing is a looker guys really digging it oh and of course as you would expect screw in links which is fantastic and a great feature it makes it really easy to swap the links on this bracelet uh, i only had to remove one link and then i basically just uh you know use the micro adjust holes there to put it on the earliest and there you have it so with that said let's go ahead and get this piece on wrist and see how it wears all right as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist this wears just beautifully look at that taper Oh yeah, you gotta love a good bracelet taper guys, 20 millimeters down to 16 with a 17 and a half millimeter push button clasp with four micro adjustment holes and it's nicely signed as well and of course all hard coated with Traska's proprietary hard coat system. I dig it and look at how flat it wears and then also those nice rounded contours help with comfort as you flex and articulate your wrist um, and then of course that uh, taper also really helps with wrist, uh, wrist articulation so really nice from that standpoint lays nice and flat and you can see that nice sapphire crystal does add with the way that it's cut it is a, a double dome underneath that nice box dome top um, so it does help reduce some of any the irregularities and distortion you would get if it was a single dome. Um, but with the box dome, those outer edges do give you a nice little bit of visual play there. Um, but that centerpiece keeps everything nice and clear. So very nice. And you can see just a very handsome color combination. I really dig this. Um, but honestly, I feel like this watch would look very cool on something like a nato strap maybe a black nato as you can see there so let's very quickly swap this out onto the nato and see how that looks oh yeah check that out oh yes i think that black bezel um the play on the black nato looks absolutely outstanding shout out to more uh, natos uh, these are great and typically are on sale for under 20 bucks and they are some of the nicest natos that you can get out there so with that said let's actually do this on camera uh, and, and get it on wrist uh, for you one of the nice things about more natos is they are more of the quote unquote full length natos um, so they don't run short, which is nice. You can actually, you have enough tongue, even on my larger, I guess on the larger side of medium anyway, um, seven and a quarter inch wrist. Um, and again, I have been kind of wearing my watches a little bit higher on wrist. So I'm probably even wearing it on the larger <laughs> portion, not even at the seven and a quarter. So, and then you see the nice sliding keeper there. What I'll do is I'll quickly 
wipe my fingerprints so you guys can get the full effect here. But look at that. There you have it, guys. What a look. Outstanding. That black seatbelt NATO, very premium, very much matches this vintage-esque vibe. I'm sure this would also look great um, paired with a black kind of rubber tropic style strap as well. But I think of the black NATO with that beautiful hardware just adds a touch of refinement and fun at the same time, uh, which I really dig. So with that said, let's actually set up for some loom shots low light transition and closing thoughts okay we'll go ahead and hit the lights here as you can see that bgw9 is really well applied um, fantastic really great even on the bezel side which is something that you really have to be quite meticulous when it comes to that application so really happy to see that but one thing i do like to work into these loom shots is also a bit of a low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to be walking in and out of buildings, maybe underneath overhangs or the shade of a tree, or maybe just spending some time in your favorite automobile. So you're always going to be in kind of some less than optimal lighting conditions to include some mixed lighting conditions. So one of the things uh, that this helps with is for you to get an idea of how these colors render one um, and also you know an idea of kind of how the light plays off of all of the different textures even in harsh lighting here very high contrast which will expose any types of defects there but you can see the light just rolls off of the brushing quite uniform so well executed from that standpoint i wouldn't say to any type of you know luxury level or anything like that but it does a very nice job as you can see look at the brushing and the light just roll over those links and end link uh, really looks great from that standpoint and that ceramic bezel insert is really deep look at that thing that is just almost like a negative void so very nice from that standpoint and of course some great play off of that uh, really cool dial so yeah i'm digging it and you can see even in kind of this transitional lighting still quite legible because of the surrounds that they use on the hands and those indices but in full-on lighting it gets back to handsome time uh so yeah this thing looks great closing thoughts for me guys on the wrist, really nice proportions, very comfortable and balanced wear. The hard coating does add a bit of a darker tint, similar to Seiko's hard coat, but it has been improved. And you know, this for terms of execution in this latest iteration, again, it definitely looks more close to regular steel than we've seen in the past, where I think it stands out a bit more, um, at least when you have something side by side, which I think is really great. And again, it just shows those little incremental improvements that really are great when it comes to um, supporting a micro brand. You know, um, you put your money into it and the brand pays you back pretty quick with, uh, you know, new refinements and iterations and these little changes and tweaks that, you might have had to wait, you know, uh, 10, 20 years from a mainstream brand. Here, you're waiting, you know, sometimes 10 months uh, for a new refinement to come out in the next batch. So, very cool from that standpoint. Um, in terms of model variants that are out there, there's a stone gray dial as well as a carbon black dial. Um, that are available and then you have your choice of the black ceramic bezel insert or the stainless steel bezel insert um, so those are kind of your options price the same again you can save pretty much 25 bucks if you go with the stainless steel insert um, i do wish they would have brought the blue dial back um because i thought that that one was really outstanding uh it was a really cool shade of blue so hopefully they do bring it back eventually um just because i i I thought that one was a real looker and I can imagine that with this movement um, and these other refinements and it really is appetizing. So 
really beautiful from that standpoint. Uh, so hopefully that does uh, come out as an option. But I think the stone gray, of course, looks great as well and, and very on time right now where gray dials are kind of back in style. And then the black dial never goes out of style. Um, and it looks very, very nice. So, um, but I think this is the more signature look out of the lineup. Um, so I will, you know, uh, tip the hat um, in terms of this particular variation and layout. Um, of course, you can also get it with or without the date complication, and the date complication is at six o'clock now with a really cool circular cutout. Um, and yeah, I think it looks cool. I prefer it with the no date in this case though. Um, but if you know, you're hung up on that, you do have options, which is great. Um, in terms of comparable models, guys, there's a lot of options out there in this kind of $600 price range that have Miyota movements that are divers with 200 meters of water resistance, um, you know, similar specs, whatnot. Uh, but for me, the free diver standout qualities are really that hard coating, which is fantastic, as well as just how well built they are and that execution on the bracelet is fantastic big fan. So bottom line here, great vintage inspired looks that are far from an homage um, with features you'd expect from watches costing double. Um, and even more when you when it comes to something like hard coding. Um, and, and yeah, this is great that it's a no date movement um, for a no date dial. You're not going to get that ghost position and the movement itself functions really well with without any mushiness or anything like that with the crown action so really digging it from that standpoint but let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do hit like and if you haven't already please do subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys